So this is our 10,000 pound utility trailer. And looking at it from here, the deck looks fine, but once we get these pieces of plywood off, you'll see why it's a problem. this board. And then this one, there's nothing holding this one. This one's blue. So pretty much every one of these is rotted out at the end. So here we go removing the boards. We decided to just cut the ends because they're rotten anyway, but we're going to try and save the middle. So we bought this trailer in 2017 used. It's a 2011 model year, and we know that it's the original boards. So they lasted about 12 years. And the boards were already starting to show a little bit of deterioration when my dad bought it. So a couple of years ago, we put those pieces of plywood on which I guess it's debatable whether or not they extended the life or shortened the life of the boards by trapping moisture between the deck and the plywood. So we just used a couple pry bars, pried against the frame of the trailer, and we were able to just rip the boards through the screws because they were so rotten. All right, we got all the boards off. Now we can hit all the screw heads because they're all so rusted in they won't come out. So now we're just cleaning up the frame while we have access to it with the boards off. Then we're going to put some paint on it. Now would also be a good time to fix or add any wiring. I kept this wiring in pretty good shape on this trailer. You can see those three clearance lights on the back I added. You need those, at least in Connecticut, when your trailer is wider than like 84 inches. And the old lights that were on it were mounted kind of underneath and they just smashed off. Those three quarter inch diameter LEDs are nice. We got it all cleaned up and wire brushed and put down some black paint. And we got one board cut to length and we have to leave a little bit of space here for that piece of angle iron that goes over top. So we're gonna cut them all to the right size and then use this timber oil to protect all six sides. So here's all the rest of the boards. They're all oak, straight from a sawmill. We got them on Facebook Marketplace from this guy Spencer up in Bloomingburg, New York. All right, here's, here's all the boards ready to go. Let's start putting them on the trailer. So the reason we got these boards straight from the sawmill was because we could get them in oak. We didn't want any of the pressure treated pine because that's not gonna last as long. And more, most importantly, we could get them an inch and seven eighths thick, which is the thickness they have to be to fit in that angle iron at the end, as well as we could get a full 18 foot length. So unfortunately, these boards were green when we got them, meaning they were still wet. So we wanted to get them on the trailer as soon as possible so they wouldn't bow and become hard to bolt down. So we'll probably put more of that sealer on them once they dry out. bowed and check it out. All the rest of them have been pretty straight. Found all the parts will disappear. Flip that.
We just need to make sure they go in far enough to get this metal that goes over top of them. So putting the boards on is pretty straightforward as long as they fit in the back in that channel iron and then the piece of angle just bolts down in the front. So I got the old high lift jack there. That's squeezing the boards together, but they're probably just going to bounce back. But... Yeah. Once you get... Here we got the last board. Have to, since the boards are bowed, it's pushing them, so there's not quite enough space at that end. But we'll just have to pry them over. We got all the boards on, but the screws that we got, these screws, two and three quarter are too short. So we need to get some three inch. And we also want to let the boards dry out a little. And then we're gonna have to put some wedges and stuff between the, at the ends to get them spaced properly. We went through, put these carriage bolts in the front bolting through all the way. And then we did the first row of screws. So these are self-tapping, but they're not self-drilling, so you have to drill a hole through the wood and the metal, and then put these in. So this board is too high up, so we're pushing it down with the jack so the screws will bite. Two screws on each board, then skip a cross member, do one screw, then one screw somewhere around here, and then two there. That's what it had originally, so that should be plenty of hold sounds. Alright, here's the last hole. This drill bit is pretty worn out now. Alright, just finished up putting linseed oil on all the heads of the bolts. This should get us hopefully at least 15 years. 
maybe in 15 years I'll have a 50 foot step deck trailer with a nice W900 to pull it to go collect more antique tractors. All right, one last thing about storage of trailers. So when you leave boards or really anything sitting on wet ground, so we don't have a spot on pavement to put these trailers, so we try and put them on this gravel. This one, unfortunately, is not, but this deck is decent. So storing your trailer somewhere like this could decrease the life of the boards. It's been two or three weeks since we replaced the deck on this trailer. Now we're getting ready to use it. We're going to pick up a Farmall M. Just make sure the lights work. Tail lights, clearance lights, tail lights. up so let's go Made it to the place. Let's see if we can find the tractor. And hiding back in this shed is our next project. I'll make a video of rescuing this Farm All M coming soon. So thanks for watching the video about these trailer boards. They will definitely be getting a ton of use, especially coming into the summer, into the tractor pulling season. Got a lot of tractors to move around, so stay tuned.